The Story of Rosie King by Anna West. Read to you by Anna West and Cassie Hahn West. If you like to think big, but some make you feel crazy, or they say you're too weird, or they say you're too lazy, don't pay attention and keep on strolling. Trust in yourself and keep the positivity rolling. But on the days you want a friend, on the days you feel alone, remember Rosie King and you won't be on your own. Rosie King was born in the town of Yorkshire. Her family loved her so much, that's for sure. Their baby Rosie was such a delight. The way she could see the world, it was quite a sight. They didn't quite know that creative Rosie King had a magic power. She could think of anything. At 10 years old, Rosie was told that she was born with autism. This blessing gave her creativity and her destiny for activism. Her imagination was so vivid. She could draw for hours, from pixies to goblins and even bunches of flowers. She was so creative that she could exit this world and enter a new one with fairies and trolls. It was her own dream world. To her, she wasn't just playing. She lived in two places, both the one that she created and our everyday spaces. Her imaginative world would be so exciting. She would often begin to stim as an outlet for her energy because her imagination would make her grin. Sometimes her stimming would look like hands flapping or rocking in a ball or really hard clapping. But sometimes she had a lot of trouble when it came to finding a playmate. They thought she was weird because her worlds didn't always translate. And it was very hard for her to pay attention in school and listen to her teacher when the world in her mind was so cool. Because nobody could see inside her mind, teachers and students thought she was bad, but really she was thinking in a different way, so this made her very sad. Her teachers and classmates just didn't understand that Rosie could see things differently and that her imagination was super grand. Despite the difficulties, her autism found who was genuine and which friends were true and who really loves her from within. People admired Rosie King for her ability to write and explain her capabilities and her imaginative might. When she was just 17, she helped write a TV show about an imaginative boy like her, a little boy named Pablo. She decided to write Pablo because she wanted to share that it's okay to be different and together we must care. Rosie also spoke to thousands of people about how being normal is no fun. Being yourself is so much better and you can get so much more done. She talks about her love for her sister and brother. They have autism too, but each sibling is different from the other. Her siblings are nonverbal. They don't speak to communicate. So together they wrestle and laugh and make funny faces and draw in order to relate. You can step outside of the box. You are extraordinary. Rosie reminds us, be yourself even when it's scary. Some people like math. Some people are tall. Some people are quiet and we love it all. So when you see someone who is sitting alone or might think differently, make sure they're known. Because human beings come in all shapes and sizes with different ways of reflecting and we are all prizes. We are all born different from each other, but it's important to celebrate one another. The, the end. Glossary. Activism the process of using your voice to make changes in the world. Autism, a brain condition that can make talking, learning, making friends, and dealing with changes, loud noises, or crowds difficult. Genuine, not pretend, honest. Might, power. Nonverbal, not talking or using spoken language. Positivity. Happy, confident attitude. Reflecting, thinking carefully. Stim, 
Repetitive actions to deal with overwhelming things like too much noise, people, colors, or changes. Translate. To say it in a way that people understand. To use language that people understand. Vivid, very strong and clear. Discussion questions. Number one, what is one thing that makes you special? Number two, can you tell someone what you're thinking without speaking? Do you make faces or do something to let them know? Number three, how can you make sure that nobody feels alone at recess?